Sons of Anarchy creator Kurt Sutter is a huge fan of The Sopranos. He believes the show paved the way for him and that he will always be indebted to David Chase for it. Do you know who of The Sopranos made it into Sons of Anarchy? Or why The Sopranos is considered one of the best TV shows ever made? Find out more at the end of this video. Let's start with some other Sons of Anarchy Easter eggs first. Did you notice Stephen King dropped by? In the seven years that Sons of Anarchy ran, there were a number of celebrities who found their way into the show. Marilyn Manson, for one, and most of us will have noticed the one and only David Hasselhoff. But did you notice that Stephen King slipped in there for a second as well? Not only that, he dropped his very own Easter egg along the way. He was invited after writing a positive column about Sons of Anarchy in Entertainment Weekly. Though he likes to act, King says he wouldn't normally have agreed, feeling that he's not that good, but he was lured in with the promise that he would get to ride a Harley Davidson. He shows up in Season 3, Episode 3, Caregiver, as the cleaner from Crescent City, who Tig hires to dispose of a body at Gemma's father's house. His name is Bachman, which is a sneaky reference to the name Richard Bachman, the name Stephen King used to publish many of his works during a time publishers thought writers shouldn't publish more than one book to prevent oversaturating the market. After a while, King was able to convince his publishers to agree to use a pseudonym, Richard Bachman, which he used for many years. Next, let's talk about Tig's fear of dolls. One of the reason Sons of Anarchy was so good at pulling you in was how real the characters felt, all with their unique, very weird traits that were so fitting it's hard to imagine they were in fact imagined. Well, maybe because they weren't all completely pulled out of thin air. Tig Traeger, the son's sergeant at arms, was possibly the most intriguing character of the show. Responsible for many of the club's troubles and having some of the most intense ups and downs, he ended up as a favorite amongst many fans. Despite the many skeletons, Tig seemed to be hiding in his closets. The strangest one must be his fear of dolls. This is actually a real-life fear for the creator, Kurt Sutter, who suffers from the phobia called pediophobia. It shows up a few times throughout the series. In Season 1, Episode 12, The Sleep of Babies, when Tig and Opie enter a warehouse full of dolls, and in Season 3, Episode 3, Caregiver, in the scene in question, Tig is in Gemma's dad's house, and the inspiration for it came straight out of Kurt Sutter's own life. Katie Seagal, his now wife, had a collection of vintage dolls on a mantle when they first met. Sutter tells on his Twitter that he was so afraid of the dolls he couldn't be alone in the room with them unless the dolls were facing away. And now, the reason the number 47 was hidden in so many episodes. Sam Crow had deep ties with the Irish. From their charter in Belfast to their bloody relationship with the real IRA, Kurt Sutter was always looking for ways to give a little nod to that relationship. One of his favorite bands is the Celtic-American Black 47, the name of which refers to the worst year of the Great Famine that Ireland had. And to pay tribute to both the band and this historical event, the number 47 showed up throughout the show numerous times. It would show up on walls, documents, buildings, bodies, just to give you an idea. In Season 3, Episode 8, Lock and Moore, Sam Coe arrives in Ireland for the first time. In that episode, the song Big Fella by Black 47 was played, which tells the story of Michael Collins and the difficult relationship he had with the people of Ireland and their struggle for independence. Other egg examples of the number 47 showing up are Season 2 Episode 13, Na Tria Bulliati, which is Irish for the Troubles. When Jax kills Weston, there's a 47 on the stall door. And in Season 6 Episode 5, The Mad King, an inmate gives Clay a book and tells him it gets really good around page 47. So far, some of the Easter eggs that were hidden in Sons of Anarchy now, let's get into the ones that paid tribute to one of Kurt Sutter's all-time favorite shows. Do you know why The Sopranos was possibly one of the best shows ever made? And did you know one of The Sopranos found their way into Sons of Anarchy? Let's find out in the next part of the video. But first, what makes The Sopranos such a good show? Maybe we don't know any better, but there was a time when shows like Breaking Bad, The Wire, or Mad Men were not the norm. In fact, if it wasn't for The Sopranos, there's a good chance we never would have had any of these shows to begin with. The HBO original raised the bar on dramatic TV to an entirely new level, signaling a new era of production quality, narrative scope, and violence on TV. But above that, all were also its storytelling, its performances, and its legacy. The combination of the first two results in the latter, The Sopranos was filled with amazing talent, both behind the camera and in front of it. A writing team consisting of creative geniuses, career-defining performances from the actresses and actors, and 
a network that was willing to take a huge risk. Each of the characters' arcs was carefully planned out and written in detail, so they actually evolved. The Sopranos showed how organized crime is something real, woven into the fabric of society. And, despite the horrible things that happened, people were in love with The Sopranos. It was the perfect combination and ultimately showed the audience that TV could be so, so, so much better than it was. And it made them realize that they wanted it to be better as well. And that's why we have the record-breaking shows of today. And too many because of that. <laughs> the Sopranos is still the best TV show ever made. And now, did you think I brought you here to Adriana U? So it's no wonder that Kurt Sutter is a huge fan of The Sopranos. The show ended up having a huge influence over Sons of Anarchy. As he told Vulture, he believes that his biker drama probably wouldn't even exist if David Chase had never innovated the TV as he knew it. This is why he just had to pay homage to the show he feels he owes everything to and put it in a few easter eggs to reference it. The first one was in Season 2, Episode 2, Little Tears. In it, Luann Delaney, played by Dendry Taylor, is afraid that Jax hasn't invited her to an empty warehouse just to hang and chill, but is going to kill her. Who wouldn't let that thought creep into their minds? Jax is a known killer. Luann has no idea that Jax has purchased the warehouse to set up his latest venture into the porn business. When Jax realizes why she's freaking out, he laughs and says to her, Did you think I brought you here to Adriana you? It seems completely random, and it was obviously very puzzling for a lot of people, but it is, in fact, a pretty straightforward reference to the tragic end of Adriana La Serva, arguably the most shocking death in TV history. Next, the second Sopranos Easter egg. Given that Kurt Sutter is a true fan of The Sopranos, we can only imagine what kind of happy dance he did when he managed to get Drea De Matteo, who played Adriana in The Sopranos, for the role of Jax's ex-wife, Wendy Case. According to Sutter's Twitter, it was a dream cast. He's got his friend John Linson to thank for it, because he's the one who introduced him to De Matteo, and she took the role to places he never even could have imagined. Ultimately, it was De Matteo's powerful performance that led Wendy to become the maternal alpha and the omega of the Sons of Anarchy mythology. She got her own line to refer to her role in Sopranos in Season 7, Episode 12, Red Rose. In the scene, Wendy is having a conversation about Nero's farm after he gives her an invitation to visit. There's some light banter and he playfully tells her, Don't piss me off now, junkie girl. You'll be riding in the back of the trunk. To which Wendy replies, It wouldn't be the first time. A clear nod to Adriana's not very happy ending, but one that could very easily pass you by if you're not paying close attention. For a time, there was speculation that Adriana didn't actually die, because the cameras tilt upward right when Silvio pulls the trigger. But in her audio commentary on the DVD of the fifth season, De Matteo confirmed Adriana had indeed died. And there you have it. The Sopranos Easter Eggs Sons of Anarchy creator Kurt Sutter dropped in the series. Did you catch them the first time you watched the show? Or did you need a second round? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.